They're known as silent destroyers. But they also hide a creepy trait when one of their kind is dying. We're talking about termites in this episode. How can a termite queen lay millions of eggs? How do termites cause billions of dollars in damage every year? And why do the colonies lick their queens to death? Termites are ancient. Their fossils date back about 130 million years to the early Cretaceous period. They can be found on six of the seven continents on Earth, but they prefer warmer, damper environments. Living in colonies with populations ranging from a few hundred up to the millions. In 2018, a 4,000-year-old super complex was discovered in Brazil with approximately 200 million excavated mounds covering an area the size of Great Britain. So it begs the question, how do these colonies get so big? Well, it all comes down to the queen. She's the founding member of a colony. Once she mates, she heads underground to start her life of perpetual egg-laying. And it really is her lifelong job now. She'll continuously lay up to 30,000 eggs per day for 15 years. She's tired. That's one every three seconds. See, we weren't kidding. To produce that amount of eggs, she needs to be bigger than the rest of the termites in the colony. Starting off as small as a dime, she can grow up to 11 centimeters long. Although this size does come with its share of problems. She's so big and so inundated with eggs that she can't move. So she has a team of workers tending to her every need. This includes licking her body to keep her clean. It gives a whole new meaning to housekeeping. After laying around 250 million eggs and being fawned upon continuously the entire time, her life comes to an end. And the workers aren't done yet. They will start licking her more aggressively, not to clean her, but to devour her. This cannibalistic trait is not fully understood, but there's probably good reason for the workers to do it. Probably didn't get any overtime. Termite colonies are giant nutrient recycling machines. It's no wonder they don't let the queen's body decay away. As part of the process, the fluids and fats are unceremoniously absorbed out of her body. Some research suggests that since a termite's usual diet is low in nitrogen, eating the queen or their fellow workers could be a good way to get nitrogen back into the colony. Speaking of food, termite colonies can get seriously huge. So what do they eat to keep everything running smoothly? If you've had any experience with termites invading your home, you might have the answer to this one. Their food of choice is wood. They can be extremely destructive when they feed on wooden structures and vegetable matter. Even worse is that introduced species are less comfortable in their new surroundings and are more likely to shelter in our homes and buildings. This leads to greater damage to structures and more frustration for property owners. That damage comes with a $5 billion bill every year in the United States alone. That's a lot of houses and a lot of wood. Wood doesn't seem the most nutritious diet, but it's chock full of cellulose, a complex carbohydrate made up of sugar. Termites have special microbes in their gut that help them break it down and turn it into food. And what's surprising is that termites are not born with these microbes. They have to acquire them from others in the colony. And here's the gross part. The microbes can be passed on by anal feeding. Yep, you guessed it. Eating the poo of other termites. Wonderful. It always comes back to poo here. They lick their queen to death and cause billions of dollars of damage every year. That's what termites do. And that's what makes them crazy creatures. 